Okay, fifth graders, we are starting uh, seven dash, yes, dash three. And so I'm on page 278. And um, again, we're dealing with, uh, with adding fractions uh, that have unlike denominators. And so we've been working for the last couple days, few days, on, on finding denominators um, for fractions. And so here they got somebody riding their scooter from their house to the park. And then in this section, they went a half a mile. And then in this section, they went a third of a mile. And so um, they're showing you uh, when you could do it. And that is you just start doing multiples of the denominators. Well, what's the, what's the denominator for a half? Uh, that's the two. What's the denominator for a third? That would be a three. And so they just started writing multiples of two, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. 10, 12. Then they started writing multiples of three, three, six, nine, twelve. 12. And so you'll notice the very first one that they come across is, is the six. And uh, so that would be the least common denominator for uh, if we were to add up one half and one third. All right. And so, uh, so then they go, go ahead and that and and we come up with uh, that he rode five sixths of a mile. Then in the convince me down here, they ask uh, what would happen if um, if they use twelve because twelve was also one that we came across. So we could go ahead and do that. We could do one half and then one third and see what we come up with. We're adding. So if we use twelve, will we come up with the same answer? And I'll put the five sixths right here. Okay. So uh, two goes into 12 six times, and six times one is six. Three goes into 12 four times. Four times one is four. And so then, then what do we do here? So we have six over 12 and four over 12. So you add the numerators. That's the number on top. So it's going to be 10 over 12. Okay. Is it the same as five sixths? What do you think? Well, Actually, it is because we can reduce this. And what I mean by reduce is uh, bring it to its simplest terms. Is there a number that will go into 10 and 12? Yeah, 5. How many times does 5 go into 10? Five times. How many times does, I'm sorry, how many times does 2 go into 10? Five times. How many times does 2 go into 12? Six times. And there, see, we have a match. So you get the same answer, even if you use a greater common denominator, assuming uh, you, your math is correct. So um, uh, they give us another example here, and then they jump down into the guided practice. Let's look at this for a moment here. In the example at the top of page 278, if the park was one eighth of a mile from the baseball practice instead of a third, how far would Alex ride his scooter in all? So I can get myself a piece of scratch paper here. So uh, instead of a third of a mile, it'd be an eighth. So it's going to be one half plus one eighth. Okay. I need to find a common denominator, a number that that both two and eight will fit into. Now again, I could do I could do multiples of two and eight and try to find it that way. Two, four, six, eight, ten. I can stop right there. Well, um, what's, what are multiples of eight? Well, eight itself, and then 16 and 24 and so forth. But you should see the, the, the match there. It's an eight. So eight we can use as the common denominator. And some of these problems that you guys get, you'll notice that you can use the, one of the denominators of the fractions that you're adding or, or subtracting here. So that stays one eighth. Two goes into eight four times. Four times one is four. Now we add them up. How do we do that? We add the numerators, what's on top. One plus four is five. The answer is five eighths. So I'm gonna come down here. Um, five eighths of a mile. Let's put MI for mile. And so that is different. Um, oh, they didn't ask if it was different. They just wanted to know how far would it be. So five eighths of a mile, all right. Um, let's see here, for number two, um, what are they asking? It says Rico and Nita solved the same problem. Rico got six eighths for an answer and, and Nita got three fourths, which is correct. So let's look at this for a second. We can't reduce three fourths into anything else. 
but six eighths we can. Okay, six eighths, if I divide each side by two, two goes into six three times. How many times does two go into eight? Four times. And they are equivalent fractions. All right, they are equivalent fractions. All right, number three here, it says uh, find the sum, use fraction strips to help. Okay, um, well, let's see here. So this would be, uh, I'm just gonna do this for you. This is gonna be two fourths plus one fourth. So they use the four as the common denominator, which makes sense. And what do you end up with? three-fourths. Right. Down at the bottom of the page in the independent practice, it says in four and five, find each sum and use fraction strips to help. All right. Uh, well, what are, the, what are the denominators, two and five? So we could do it this way, two and five, and I can just start writing multiples of two, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. And I could do 5, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Do we see any matches here? Yeah, there's a 10 and there's a 10. So it looks like the common denominator, the smallest one would be 10. So um, this would be 5 tenths. And this one, let's see here, this would be 4 tenths. And so then you'd add up the two on the top and it's nine tenths. All right. Um, now look at this one. This one has three fractions we're adding. Thankfully, two of them have the same denominator. You should recognize, I hope hopefully by now, that we could use six as the common denominator. Um, so I'm just gonna fill that out, pre-fill that, six, six, six right there. So this stays one sixth, and then three goes into six twice, so this is two sixths, and this is also uh, one sixth, and then we add those up. That's gonna be four sixths, which can be reduced. Two goes into four twice, two goes into six three times, two thirds. Okay, that was a pretty easy guided practice. Now we're just gonna jump into the problem solving I'll help you guys with a couple of those. I'm going to end this because I'm trying to keep these shorter because I don't like it when the sound doesn't coordinate, you know, very well. Okay, explain why the denominator six. Let's see here. Turn this over. Okay. Explain why the denominator 6 and 3 6 is not changed when adding fractions. Um, well, I guess they're, they're talking about these two fractions right here. Um, uh, because... Um, we use the denominator of six. So it would not change. I think that's essentially what they're what they're looking for. All right, about one tenth of the bones in your body are in your skull. Oh, your hands have about one quarter of the bones in your body. Write and solve an equation to find out the fraction of bones in your body that are in your hands and skull. So what are we doing? We're adding one tenth plus one fourth. What's the common denominator that we could use? Hmm, think about it. I'll let you guys figure that one out. Number eight of 36 chemical elements, two are named for women scientists and 25 are named for places. What fraction of these 36 elements are named for women or places? Well, first off, um, the, for women, it's going to be two out of 36, which you can reduce. 
1 over what? I'll let you figure that one out. And then 25 over 36 for places. That one cannot be reduced. Okay. Um, let's see here. Roger made a table showing how he spends his time in one day. How many days will go by before Roger has slept the equivalent of one day? All right, so how many hours are in a day? That would help. 24 hours in one day. All right. So explain how you, okay. So how many days will go by before he has slept? So how much does he sleep? Three eighths of a day. So three eighths of 24. All right, well that's kind of convenient. How many eighths fit into, well, let's see here. How could I, what's, hmm. Um, So, gosh, there's a couple of different ways I could show you how to do this. All right, so one way is this. Um, three eighths. plus three-eighths equals six-eighths, okay? Remember when we get, remember eight over eight, that would be equivalent to uh, one day, all right? Um, so that's still less than one, six-eighths, six-eighths is less than one. Um, so what if we added three-eighths plus three eighths plus three eighths. What's that gonna be? That's gonna be nine eighths. So that's gonna be greater than one. So I, th I think the answer is pretty simple. Explain how you, okay, um, how many days will go by? So the answer would be three days, okay? Because each day, Move this up so you can see it a little bit better here. Sorry. Each day, there's one day, there's two days, there's three days. So finally, at nine eighths, nine eighths is greater than one. All right. So three days would go by. Um, three days, um, I added. Um, each day, and then I could put in parentheses three eighths till it was greater than one or one day. All right. Um, hopefully that made sense to you guys. Okay, uh, ten and eleven. I think you guys can do that. Which equations are true when one half is placed in the box? Um, so each one of these boxes would have a half is what they're saying. And you need to mark off which ones would be true. Which equa equations are true when four sevenths is placed in the box? So each box would have four sevenths. Okay. I think you guys could do that. All right, that's it. End of this video. I will see you guys tomorrow.